For decades, people have had an incredible affection and love for their favorite cars. It always comes down to one question, which one is best? So Hutch thought they'd make a mobile game based on this, featuring the most cars in the world. Easy, right? Wrong. When you have to squint to see whether it's going to work or not, that's never a good sign. That's clearly just not going to work. They wouldn't have put me in charge of it if they thought it was going to be a huge game. Nobody could predict what was going to happen. I really thought it was going to bang up the business. I've always been completely obsessed with cars. First ever version of Top Drive was actually in a Google spreadsheet. Two different people could log into it and they would pick their cars for the challenge. It would calculate a score and you would see who won. It immediately felt like there was something quite interesting here and you wanted to know what would happen if I put a different car on that challenge. It just felt fresh, it felt fun. It immediately felt rich and the game kind of then went on from that point. The initial version was these just circular pucks represented the cars. We just got that, you know, accelerating down a straight line. So it reflected the real world stats, you know, the not to 60, the not to 100, the top speed. So we made sure we had different surfaces, we had different weathers. We were just building it up piece by piece and seeing the simulation come to life. We got some of the road test team at the Evo magazine to come down for a, for an afternoon session. They would put their own guesses on the line as to which one would win and then they would watch it and then they would argue about it. And that was exactly what we wanted. We knew that this is the kind of thing that would work for a certain kind of person. We all walked away from that with it, you know, with a sense that we had something that had the accuracy to, to be credible. It was absolutely hitting that mark. And then it was just about building it up and up from there. There was me and one other analyst at the time, which was Robin. So we put out this earliest version of Top Drives and we're looking at this data. It was not a slam dunk. All of our success metrics by which we were judging how much potential a game had were built around these high retaining casual games. None of those rules applied for Top Drives. We have benchmarks from our previous games. How many people who play the game on the first day come back on the next? It was pretty low in that regard. These numbers were telling us Top Drives will not be successful. If we had followed those markers, there was only one thing we could do, which is not continue the development of the game. So there's no doubt it, it was in some danger. There was a sort of change when Ian, um, when Ian Griffiths joined as, as sort of game director. The moment I came in, I had some big ideas for how to change it. <laughs> it lacked any sort of idea that it felt real. We had dots racing around what ended up being called like a Darth Vader's helmet look. <laughs> the Darth Vader's helmet look. I mean, it was functional, but, but we, we just realized that it just, it just wasn't right. We basically dropped tools and had to go back to the drawing board. I really pushed the team to put in cars. When we changed the cars from little circular pucks to actual models of cars, you could see more people stick with the game for longer. We put that out, we tested it on players, and they just responded the best. They had much more of an emotional connection. There was a very, very early stage community on a forum where immediately some passionate people were getting involved and talking about things. People who did stay, stayed around for a long time, and who did engage, really engaged. So our forum where we were getting player feedback was hugely active. We were making a game called Hot Wheels at the time, which had tens of millions of players, and Top Drives had about 700 and we had more interaction in the forum than we did from the millions of players playing uh, Hot Wheels. And that's where we kind of felt like there was something truly engaging about this product. We had this notion of collector books, you know, kind of filling an album. We wanted to create that excitement about opening a pack of cars and seeing what you get. In Top Drives, we want everything a manufacturer has to offer. Could you even do this? Is this something you can even do, come to an agreement with dozens of manufacturers to license hundreds of their cars in a single game because nobody had done it. We just did not know whether we were going to get those manufacturers on board. But we have a licensing guru. I was definitely thinking, shit, there's a lot of work. Once we got a few known brands on board, it became easier. Other manufacturers see that there's, you know, there's some credibility to the project. Initially, our goal was, could we get 500 cars in the game? I think we might have talked about. Once we were maybe the 400 car mark, something like that, it was like, do you know what? There's enough manufacturers, enough variety, and enough cars to, to make this work. We launched Top Drives. We got a bunch of people in initially, not a huge number compared to our earlier games either, and then it started to drop down. 
So we weren't sure how much we should continue to support the game. Well, it's never good to have terrible numbers. That's one of the first things they teach you at game making school, is that you want people to like the game. But it was always difficult to justify some of the elements of Top Drives, especially when some of the metrics weren't great. The business had its struggles. We were trying to find product that worked, we could grow the studio. Most studios that had a lot of money would have killed the game. But because we had no money, we had to build the game, we had to make it the best it could be. So we kept going in the background whilst we were making other stuff to kind of de-risk it. We had no real plan or knowledge of how best to use these cars. And perhaps that was for the best, because once we were live, we could respond to how players interacted with those cars, what kind of events they liked. Around late October, something interesting happened. The number of players who played the game each day just stopped dropping. This was unprecedented for us. The game was actually on a positive trajectory. At that point, we knew something amazing is happening here. We've got to support this game uh, and give it everything we can. In all honesty, it was probably my favourite piece of work that I've ever done in my career. It wasn't the money that was making it work for me, it was the community that was behind it and how passionate they were about it. It's not just an idea that we felt passionate about and excited about, other people have got on board. And really, they found a home for their hobby. The thing that always makes me the happiest is when I look at players who started playing years ago and how many of them are still playing is really, really gratifying just to see that ongoing joy. What I love about Top Drives is that there's nothing else like it. It's the only game really out there that lets you play with the, the whole world of cars. We created a new type of game. The game just keeps going, right? And we keep building it, we keep people engaged, we keep people having fun. That's massive. <laughs>